I'm Jerry Way from the Mount Sinai Medical School in New York City. I'm here to interview Mr. Hiroshi Ichikawa, who used to work for Olympus Corporation, who's receiving the first ASGE Industry Service Award. Hiroshi, you're getting this award because of the tremendous work you did to introduce flexible endoscopy to the United States. Tell us how that all happened. When you were first sent here by Olympus, how old were you, and what was your mission when you first came here? Well, I uh, joined Olympus in uh, 1964, and my first assignment was uh, mic microscope design, <laughs> microscope section, not endoscope, but because endoscope business wasn't existing. Then uh, four years later, endoscope came out, and uh, I asked the company to change my uh, job to more challenging uh, job. Then uh, they sent me uh, to uh, New York uh, to promote uh, Olympus uh, flexible endoscope, so-called gastric camera and the fiber optic uh, endoscopes. Now tell us, what was the gastro camera? Is it different than what we use today? Yeah, gastro camera has a very tiny camera on the tip of the endoscope and they're taking a picture through this uh, tip uh, camera and the uh, doctors examine the, uh, the disease by watching uh, a film. And uh, there's, uh, there are two types of uh, gastro cameras. One is a blind camera with no viewing system. Other one has a fiber optic viewing system. And how do they use a, a blind viewing gastro camera? Well, the uh, doctor insert endoscope through the mouse to the patient and the blindly, uh, you have to have a training <laughs> by guess, I think. Have you used it? I never used a gastro okay. camera. That was um, early on, but it, early on in the United States, that was the, the thing to do was use the gastro camera. It had a tiny little five millimeters film yeah, strip right. at the end of the camera. Yeah. And when you expose the films in multiple different positions, uh, you'd send the film to Olympus, yeah. and Olympus would develop the film and send back this tiny little film strip that yeah. we would look in a little um, e editing view scope yeah. and see what was happening inside the stomach yeah. a year, a week ago. So, yeah. so when I came to New York, my first job was to develop uh, those uh, gastro film, gastro camera film for one or two years, and uh, then uh, eventually I uh, started to R&D work to develop so a new... So what about the uh, first flexible endoscopes that were made? Uh, the first one was by Hershkowitz, and when did Olympus get into the company, into the, into the manufacture of uh, endoscopes? First, uh, Olympus uh, made a gastro camera was 1950, a long time ago. Then uh, they... Uh, they improved uh, a lot, and eventually uh, uh, they came up with a kind of a usable instrument. They uh, introduced uh, 1960, I think. Then uh, we, we put uh, a lot of uh, improvement and, and uh, viewing device, and uh, as you know. But you eventually uh, went through the ranks of Olympus to become the director of Olympus USA, and uh, you were in charge of everything here in the United States. Um, what was your mission then when you came, uh, when you became the president of uh, Olympus USA? Uh, my first mission was to promote uh, Olympus gastro camera and Olympus uh, fiber endoscope. That was a mission to promote uh, to the United States because uh, at that time uh, in Japan, uh, doctors uh, started to use a gastro camera already. But in the, United States, in the United States, nobody knew this. Yes, it was something brand new, and uh, the, the flexible endoscopic market hadn't even started yet. When, uh, when, we, when you first came to the United States and tried to introduce endoscopy, uh, flexible endoscopy here in the United States, um, the older gastroenterologists were very adamant that people who did endoscopy were lower level people um, because we used to use uh, rigid instruments mm. and you couldn't really see very much and you had to make up a lot of what you were doing 
and uh, when flexible endoscopes came and other people could see through the uh, through the lens, it was incredible how much more knowledge we had yeah. to uh, to share. So over the years, um, you spent a lot of time running back and forth through the United States. And where did you go in the United States? Well, basically, first of all, I before I did this, I took uh, two weeks. Uh, Gastroscopy uh, course uh, by Dr. John Morrissey at yes. uh, University of Wisconsin. Then I learned a lot about the U.S. Uh, you know GI practice. Then I started to travel all over the United States with a prototype instrument that so let uh, Dr. all doctors use it. But as I recall, you were you visited me lots of times and. Uh, after you visited me, you'd be on the way to, uh, to the airport to fly somewhere else to show them some new instrument. Um, all the time you were traveling yes. while, you were, while you were here early in the United States. Yeah, I totally but shortly that. after you arrived in the United States, um, rumor is that you helped Hiromi Shinya develop the first snares to take out polyps in the colon. Is that right? That's right. When uh, Dr. Shinya was uh, doing uh, just, a I, I think, a test, uh, testing uh, to develop uh, colonoscopy, and uh, he, uh, I think uh, 1968, I, uh, right after, I, soon after I arrived in New York, I met uh, Dr. Shinya, and uh, he was uh, kind of passionate to develop uh, colonoscopy technique and also polypectomy. And the polypectomy was his primary goal, not uh, colonoscopy. And uh, he wanted to try to remove polyps from the colon by endoscope, not the open surgery. Because uh, at that time, he told me that uh, he was a surgeon. And 30% uh, of uh, the colon surgery is to remove polyps. So uh, if uh, we can remove colon from, uh, uh, you can remove polyps from the colon through the endoscope with a surgery, that would be great. And uh, he said uh, we, we could save a lot of uh, lives. And so how did you go about developing the snare technique? Well, then uh, Hiromi, she and I discussed a lot and uh, every day, every month, and uh, it took a long time to uh, come up with some kind of idea, and uh, finally, maybe snare might be the best. And we sketched out, and uh, we we made a lot of drawings, and uh, I I sent some of them to uh, Olympus Tokyo, uh, my boss, to make uh, prototypes for us. But uh, <laughs> their answer was negative because uh, they didn't uh, want they, you to do it. Right. Well, yes, yes, yes and no. Answer, answer was yes and no because uh, they said it's a very dangerous uh, the procedure and that you may cause a perforation of this uh, colon. At the same time, uh, even medical community against uh, this idea to remove uh, uh, polyps from the colon by utilizing a cautery device. So uh, we, we said, okay, uh, but Dr. Shinya didn't give up. We didn't want to give up. So uh, I, I made a lot of uh, snare devices by myself. And uh, we started to use uh, those uh, uh, devices on the dog, an animal love. Incredible. And uh, that's the way snares were made? Yeah. What did you use for the wire for the snare? Oh, uh, we, I used all kinds of uh, the wires, but uh, the best wire I found was uh, the uh, wire uh, is being used uh, for, uh, in uh, endoscope uh, angulation mechanism. That wire uh, is uh, the eight uh, thin coiled wire we call, we call braided wire. That is very strong and flexible and also uh, good for HF current, high frequent currency. And uh, this, uh, we, we found this is the best. So uh, we started to use, uh, uh, I have a drawing and, and everything that if you are interested. Those, those drawings go back a long way. Yeah. And now we have uh, easy, easy access to snares. Yeah, this, uh, 
shows here uh, this article, and uh, maybe we have a lot of. Uh, All these are drawings of uh, your sketches of yeah. what we should do with the uh, with the snares. Yeah. So now it's easy to take out polyps. That's these days we have uh, endoscopic mucosal resection, endoscopic submucosal dissection. We have now full thickness resection of the yeah. colon. Um, lots of new devices, all based on the original work yeah. that you and uh, Dr. Shinya did yeah. with the original snares for taking out polyps. Yeah, we didn't want to give up. Uh, we had a lot of pressure. <laughs> but uh, I, I th we thought this is a great uh, you know, uh, it, procedure to save a lot of uh, it lives. It certainly made a big difference. Now, when Welch Allen came out with the first video endoscope, um, did that create panic in Olympus Corporation? Well, I think uh, Welch Allen introduced uh, the first video endoscope in late 1980s. And at that time, already video technology was available. And uh, of course, we are uh, uh, preparing some kind of a video endoscopy system, but uh, we thought too early. But uh, we are surprised because the well challenge introduced already. And uh, we, we could do that, but uh, we, don't, we didn't want to jeopardize our current uh, five, host, five endoscopic uh, endoscope uh, business. So we waited until uh, video endoscope would be perfect. And uh, a few years later, finally, we introduced the video endoscope. For a long time, you were in charge of repairs in the New Mexico um, uh, factory of Olympus. And tell me, what was the major problem that endoscopes were sent in for repair? Uh, there are several uh, problems uh, always. Uh, the popular, I mean, uh, a popular problem is uh, insertion tube kinking, kinks. And light guide kinks, sometimes broken, and the pinholes, or air nozzle, the air nozzle system. Yeah, that little that tiny, tiny thing. Because that people the hit, and they, they did a very sophisticated instruments of break, and also uh, angulation mechanism always uh, become loose because four, eye, four wires uh, control uh, the endoscope manipulation. So eventually, this becomes loose, and sometimes it won't work. So those kind of repairs is very common. And uh, you you figured out some some ways to make endoscope repair turnaround very quick. Uh, what did you guys do for that? Yeah, the our main problem in uh, repair work is the turnaround time. Uh, I, I think you remember when we receive an instrument, it takes about two or three weeks and fix it and return to hospital. And uh, that's too long. So we, we, try, we decided to make a program so that uh, when we receive an instrument for overhaul, we exchange with the other instrument, just put the same number and return. So those <laughs> rotation ah. system. So they didn't get their same instruments back. No. They got a different back just to cut down the turnaround time. Right. Once you become Olympus uh, the, uh, customers, we just uh, exchange. Tell me, uh, what's the big difference between endoscopists in Japan and endoscopists in the United States? Uh, in early, like a 19... 60, 1970s, uh, they're different because uh, Japanese doctors are interested in only stomach. And, uh, but now, Japanese, uh, European, American doc endoscopy uh, doctors are all the same to me. Yes, I've noticed Not that much when different. I travel throughout the world, everybody uses the same techniques, yeah. the same instruments, and uh, there's very little variation in technique between doctors in Asia, and doctors in yeah. Europe, and doctors in uh, Yeah, in look the at uh, DDW. It uh, m m looks like 50% uh, of uh, physicians are international, right? Yes, all, yes. Uh, yeah, come right. from all over the world. They take talking about the same thing. So now that you're uh, retired, what do you do most of the time? I, I live in uh, three places. Uh, 
Long Island, New York, and uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico, and uh, Tokyo, Japan, three places. And uh, I, I travel <laughs> around <laughs> those <laughs> cities all the time. They, and my they... hobby is uh, golf and the painting. And uh, painting? I love uh, watercolor painting. I, I've been doing since I was uh, five years old. It's a long time, and still I do painting. That's my hobby. So you uh, put yourself in a room and paint away. You must uh, manufacture lots of paints, <laughs> lots of drawings and that sort yeah, of thing. Yeah, I could sell a lot of paintings, but I never sold. I don't want to. You don't sell them? I don't want to paint for sale. What do you do with all of them? Oh, just uh, accumulate and uh, take a picture, and uh, I give uh, all my families and friends and you know. Too, too bad, too bad. <laughs> but you've always wanted to be a, an artist, you tell me. Yeah, when I was uh, little kids and uh, I wanted to be an uh, artist, but uh, my, my, then I wanted to go to uh, the art school, the college, but my father strongly rejected against it. And uh, he said, if uh, I go to uh, 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 art school, He's not going to support anything. So I, um, young, I was young, and I had no money, and I couldn't do anything. So I followed whatever he said, and uh, I went to second choice engineering. Well, that was a good choice for us because <laughs> you brought us a lot of information and uh, new techniques, new devices to help us bring the flexible endoscopy market mm. into the United States. Yeah. Tell me, what advice do you have for young doctors, and old doctors here that are doing endoscopy? Yeah, the, when I, was, I came here, the endoscopy, endoscopy is a very special uh, instrument, but now it's becoming almost commodity, and uh, everybody knows uh, everything. So uh, there's not much uh, room to improve. Uh, so uh, I, I, I'm an engineer, and I, I came from uh, the endoscope makers, so what I can say is uh, uh, for patient safety, cleaning and disinfection are very important, most important. And also, uh, since the uh, instrument is very expensive, so uh, uh, I want you to, not only young, but all the, everybody, uh, handle instrument uh, gently, carefully. So all, that's all I can say. And also for young doctor, of course, uh, you need to follow uh, ASG had a good uh, uh, guideline, so uh, you have to follow. Okay, thank you very much, Hiroshi. We all thank you for your work in the endoscopy industry. Thank you. Well, thank, thank you, you very much.